cold. Ah. So, so how, what is windy hot then? How hot? Um, oh, we're, we're in degrees. So we're in the higher 20s heading into the 30s, depending on where you're standing. 30 degrees, which is, I don't know what that is. Yeah, now. we're in the same. Okay, so we're, we're like two, we do it in degrees C. Oh, okay. So which way, how many degrees are you two, did you say? Right about two. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. I don't think I've ever been in temperature that cold before. Have you not? That's so funny. Yeah, yeah uh, we're actually the warmest part of the country at the moment. Most places have got snow, but in the southwest, we're like the last people to get snow usually. Wow. So, so uh, when would you expect to see the snow? Uh, the norm is kind of like January, February, we might get a bit here. The rest of the country will get it quite a bit. But um, the Lord's been telling me we're going to get a lot of snow. So that's oh, a whole wow. other whole other thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's so yeah. cool. Well, I'm keen to experience the snow. And so I am excited. I've got my beautiful big map of the world up in front of me on my far wall to just in, keep me excited and uh, for the day when we get to go traveling and experience and come visit you and come visit everybody in America and just trip around the place. So I can't wait. Well, when you go to America, I'll come with you because I have to go there too. I have a thing. Yeah, that's oh, good. Yeah, you get cool. cool. I get to do. So yeah. <laughs> go, Tag. Come on, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we are on. I think we're good to go. Hello, challenges for our those of you who are sleeping. We hope you are sleeping wonderfully well. For those of you who are doing dinner and beyond. Pray that your evenings are being blessed and, and I am super excited like beyond words can express that I have my beautiful friend Joe joining us all the way from Bath in England. Woo! Yeah. The crowds were all here we go. What is it like to live in a place that is named Bath? Because all I keep thinking of is a bathtub. It's for a reason. It's actually uh, a Roman city where they had the Roman baths. Ah, there you go. So, yeah, you can actually go and visit the actual Roman bath and it's got hot springs and you can go and like soak. So yes. Ooh, very nice. And there's a lot of prophecy over our city about the wells springing up again and healing waters. So good. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. That's great. <laughs> Well, I'm really pumped to have you here, Joe. And so for our viewing audience, when you get to have a watch of this, this is a really a beautiful friendship that Joe and I have. We connected because God crossed our path, but didn't separate us afterwards, kept us on the same path as we came together in a program called Unlocking Your Book. Both of us, God had downloaded books and had put us in a place where we, we both were looking for mentoring. We were both looking to write these books and get the word that God had put inside each of us out. So we were unlocking our voices as much as we were unlocking our books. And Joe and I connected through this group and have built this beautiful friendship. And we've been able to connect up via Zoom and pray together and prophesy together, release fire together. Yay! <laughs> And so to have you come and join in this beautiful challenge, Joe, is such an honour and a pleasure. So thank you so much for coming along and doing a bonus session with me. I am just extremely honoured to be asked. And uh, I confess, I read your write-up and I was like, who's she talking about? And you're just so so gracious. And I, yeah, really great, grateful to be here. Thank you. <laughs> I did straighten my crown because it's about Jesus, not me. <laughs> and I do say that everything that I said was true. It is. Okay. <laughs> I'll That's what my friend you. said when I wobbled. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe, we um, connected up before this event and had a bit of a chat about what this would look like tonight. And I had a few ideas about um, really jumping into the prophetic because this is part of who you are and and a calling that's on your life. So I wondered if you would just mind telling everybody the book that you've written, a little bit of information about what you do with your Olive Branch ministry and what all that looks like. What is your world about right now? Sure. So my daytime job is I work in retail. So that's very hectic while well, it's Christmas, but that's another story. 
Um, my heart and passion is ministry. The daytime job is just the thing. Um, but uh, I basically have written a book called Mind the Gap because God took me on a journey. He met me in a crisis point and I realized I could hear his voice and I come from a church background where that was not a thing. So um, the whole journey has been about beginning to hear his voice, develop relationship with him. Didn't even have a framework to call that prophetic because I didn't know what prophetic was except the prophets in the Old Testament. So to me, I was like, I'm just chatting to God. Um, and yeah, realizing he talks back. Um, so the book is Mind the Gap, in which I talk about all the gaps that we need to fill in our lives, gaps in finance, health, relationships, all kinds of gaps that we come up against in life. Um, and they all get filled when we mind the gap in our relationship with God, because once we start to hear him, he can lead us and counsel us. And so those other problems can be solved with his help. So mind the gap. Mm -hmm. um, and then Olive Branch Ministries is a new thing. I have uh, just started really excited about that. A couple of months ago, I have a YouTube channel and um, I'm putting up regular posts on my Facebook and my website page. Can I give that? That's yes. uk. And on there, I'm posting regular, like um, short prophetic words. Um, and also um, uh, the Lord is building um, a small team. So um, uh, a young friend of mine, Josh, and I are doing YouTubes uh, once, twice a week on a Tuesday and a Friday. And we are bringing um, just some chat and discussion and unpacking the word of God together. Um, and just kind of getting real, talking about things we struggle with and how to overcome them with Jesus. And I call it Olive Branch, just a funny story because my great grandmother was called Olive and she married Harry Branch. Ah. But, <laughs> but olive branch in the Bible symbolizes um, revelation because the olive tree is where um, the oil was taken for the temple to bring the light. Um, so, yeah, olive branch ministries is bringing revelation, hopefully. There we go. I love it. I love it. it's called olive branch. That's just beautiful. <laughs> really sing, sings to my heart. No, oh, this is gorgeous. So that's exciting. I love what you do. So yes, you can join in with what, what Jo's doing. Um, I'll post links to her Facebook page and to her website there so you guys can find her nice and easy and check out what she has um, in terms of her beautiful videos and the message that God's giving her as she posts and stuff. So definitely worth, worth following Jo. She has some really beautiful revelation and and I love the way you write Joe. it's really easy to understand it flows really well so um yeah definitely worth connecting up with Joe. so that's really cool. thank you pray for the book it's still in editing yes I yeah I really need to get that out help me Jesus there we go yes Lord thank you Lord <laughs> you Lord. know that one yeah. Yeah. yeah release that book yes yeah that'll be for both of us 2021 book releases thank you Jesus yeah. <laughs> um, good <laughs> Awesome. All right. So you were saying just before that you were just chatting to God. You didn't think anything much more about it in terms of prophetic and what that looked like because your understanding of the prophetic was very Old Testament. So expand a little bit more about what that has looked like for you in terms of a journey with God and coming to that place of understanding the gifts and callings that are on your life. Ooh, okay, so um, I tentatively began to talk to him more and and hear him speak after I heard him speak in an encounter. I was in a very dark and desperate situation away from home for a weekend and things were really not going well at all. Um, I was with somebody who was suicidal and it was just not great and I ran into uh, the square I was in in Milan in Italy I never been there before didn't know anybody completely by myself broken and um, we had a baby daughter who was um, with my parents back home and it was my first time I'd left her and just broken and I cried out uh, God where are you um, I actually said because because of the reflection of where I was I didn't know I could go straight to him I was like 
send me an angel and it's like he's like no me and then I had this encounter with an old man in the square who was not great and he was trying to take me by the arm and force me to go to his house so I had to run away from that and the Holy Spirit was kind of inside of me and it was like why are you asking for an angel and then um, I got back to the hotel room desperate sat down on the bath locked myself in there and I said I want my dad still not asking for God felt like I couldn't approach God because of all that was going on and I clear as anything I heard a voice and an arm squeezed my shoulder and the voice said um, sit here child I'm your heavenly father and I had a hug and then when I got out of the bath got into bed opened my mouth to start praying and like figure out what I was going to do I found myself speaking in a new language and basically I had been baptized in the spirit with nobody there I'd been taught that that was not a thing <laughs> so it was quite a problem actually because I'm like I'm being naughty because <laughs> I didn't know any better um yeah and so the journey then I got home and the Lord had brought an old lady into my life who I had in my uh walk for three years and she had had a difficult life herself but had also had an, a private encounter with God in her kitchen where she said Jesus walked off the pages of the Bible into her heart and then she too was baptized in the spirit so she was there to explain it to me but she did it from a completely outside of church framework because she'd never been permitted to go to church she had a controlling husband who was not great and so she she didn't have a church framework, but she was loved the Lord. So she counseled me, helped me to understand the, <clears throat> the whole Holy Spirit thing, to begin to learn to discern. I heard you talk the other day about discernment, so that I asked for discernment because I needed it, and then he gave me it. And I had a bolt of lightning hit me on the head while I was asleep. <laughs> I know that sounds mad. Uh, it was. But it wasn't it was um it cracked through my ceiling um uh but it wasn't literally outside it was a starry night outside it was supernatural um and it just touched me on the forehead and i didn't know what to do so i sat up and i said thank you jesus and rolled over and went back to sleep <laughs> uh and then i said to this old friend i said what was that and she said lightning um sim in the bible can symbolize revelation yeah. and so it was like he was saying i'm choosing you to receive revelation um so yeah that's just a short bit and then yeah as time has gone on i've journaled a lot um and that's yeah i'm talking too much go ahead <laughs> it's wonderful i love it i love just the story like wow like in your place of what you understood god still yeah. made you there like even though to you what you had learned was that you couldn't come to father father still came to you Absolutely. And just on your shoulder and his words that he spoke to you are just stunning. <laughs> and then to, to get the gift of tongues like that, we just, um, I recently just did a session um, in our church group about speaking in tongues. And it was amazing the revelation that flowed that so many of us had learnt to be afraid of it and learnt to be, um, you know, you don't do that. Um, are you speaking the devil's language? And, you know, like even me, when I got it, I was so petrified. I, I, don't, know to, I don't know what to do with it. And is it even allowed? And am I in trouble or am I doing the right thing? And what do I even do with it? And so we broke it all down and talked about what that, what that looked like. So to hear yeah. that for you, oh, my gosh. <laughs> There you go. And that's what it's about. It's just that beautiful gift that God gives us. But I, I'm hearing that for you. It's come out of relationship with Father. Absolutely. It's conversational, conversational, conversational. And as you've had conversation with him, he's revealed and showed you more of him and you've had more experiences, yeah? For sure. Absolutely. And the conversations, I mean, it, there's just so much grace because of all the difficulties I was encountering i had to talk to him mm. and so it, it it kind of pushed me into conversation mm. even when i thought i shouldn't approach him i needed to do you know what i mean so the grace of god that the dire situations are always worked for our good you know yeah 
yeah, yeah. We talked about that a bit in today's session about, um, for me, the language that I now speak is that my, for example, my divorce is actually my victory. So the things that have been the most traumatic are actually the things that I stand in greater victory on. And it's actually not a negative. It's all been worked out for good in my life. And so you watch as God uses all those situations for us to come not only closer to him, but to hear his voice and to follow his leading and walk it out with him by our side in conversation in what do I do now? What comes next? What does this look like? And so even when it steps into prophetic, what does that look like for you to build your confidence up in knowing that you hear God's voice and that when he gives you a word to speak to somebody else, that you're actually relaying the word well with love? Like, how, what does that look like for you? Yeah, so this, this unpacked slowly and I love how he um, will make sure to um, kind of protect you when you're learning so um, I had, because of the, the shocks in my life and the things he needs to unpick, um, I went on a slow journey because I didn't have people around me to mentor me mostly. Um, so I, this had to be me and him. So the things you're teaching, I got one-on-one -on -one, bit by bit. And then every now and again, he would put somebody along my path who would send me to something. But I really didn't get the availability of what there is now of like sozos and inner healing most of that happened without that just me and him so um i i was very uh judgmental because i didn't know i was mm -hmm. um but when you are born in a world that is judgmental you judge because everybody judges right mm -hmm. so i didn't um uh I didn't ever have the leeway to kind of leave and leave a bit of, uh, well, maybe there's something I'm not seeing here. It was always, no, that's not right. <laughs> and so he had to unpick that because when he would speak things to me, I would hear the words, but because I was learning to get to know him and to know my own heart, um, I was interpreting them through filters. Yeah, And so like I've got a prophetic word that I wrote um, and it sounded so condemning. Mm. And as I got to know him, I'm like, my father doesn't condemn, but what he, but it was scripturally accurate. Yep. And so I had to learn how to take that word and say, okay, so how would you say that? And actually in the book, I, I looked at that and I'm like, this is how it looked. Holy Spirit, what would you actually have said? And so I was well um, versed in his scriptures, but now with his heart, I could rewrite that entire word. And it sounded like a totally different thing. Yeah. Um, and it's really important that you deliver it as he would deliver it, because if you're going to be his voice and you're going to share his heart, you want, you want the fullness of what he's saying. You don't want to misrepresent him. We're supposed to be his ambassadors, so we represent him well. So we have to say it as he would say it. Yeah. And sometimes as well, he will say it slightly um, convicting. You know, if, if he's looking after you and he loves you and you're going down a wrong path, you know, he's going to say, don't touch that hot fire. Yes. He'll use that parent tone but he'll never condemn you i love you don't touch that hot fire you know so it's it's understanding his heart and getting the fullness of him his grace and his truth but he's not just grace and he's not just truth he's both mm. yeah. i love them i love that because they're so true hey we can be so caught up in the scripture and the word and how it was presented regardless you know the, you know the context that it's in but unless you've actually come and found out his heart and why he was releasing that word or why he was speaking that and how he wants to speak it, mm -hmm. then it doesn't carry the anointing and the power of his voice. And I love that because that's like, that's what all this is about to flip the script and find out his language yeah. as opposed to the language of the sharks. Mm -hmm. Because if we speak language of sharks, we're causing damage. When we speak the language of our Father, of Jesus and Holy Spirit, we're speaking love 
and love always wins. So that's just really beautiful. Wow. Love that. Oh my gosh. It's quite the journey, isn't it? It's um, do you think at any point in time did you feel like you were never gonna get anywhere or never gonna get there to a place where you could actually share prophetic words? All the time. <laughs> I am um uh it's a British thing. We are very good at uh, running ourselves down anyway. Like all our jokes are about laughing at ourselves. <laughs> So our, our culture needs to be unpicked when we, we get into the prophetic because I, like I would hear him so much and doubt it constantly. Wow. And it really only this year, Carrie Ann, I would say, um, I've, I've begun to become more confident in the last decade. Mm. Um, it's got more confident in the last three years, but this year, has cemented it. Is wow. really to say it and this is a 20 year journey now that just also to say for viewers I don't think everybody else has got to do a 20 year journey it was just the journey because of when I was um when he showed it to me I think if I had brought out the revelation two years in that he was giving me 20 years ago it wouldn't have been received anyway because it wasn't the right time so that's not to say everybody's got to go on a 20 year journey it was just the journey that he had me on um but yeah um often and and i i have to check myself like i said i, I read your thing and i'm like who is she talking about <laughs> and i can hear holy spirit being like you're wearing my crown like hello i'm <laughs> in you you're in me <laughs> so when when i this is what i do now um when i wobble I have to center myself in him by uh, shutting my eyes and picturing myself wearing a royal robe, walking down the center aisle up to the throne room in heaven because I had an encounter just recently in which um, there I was worshiping before the throne and I realized that I was right down the far end <laughs> and everyone was there worshiping and I'm either right down the far end at the front or I'm right on the back row looking at everybody else and this time I was right down the far end and um, he was looking out at everybody and he turned and like pointed at me and went and it was like you come and stand right here in front of me like okay <laughs> so I have to make myself agree with what he says basically, because it doesn't come naturally to me to agree that that's what his value of me is, but it is, yeah. you know? So yeah, all the time. But but I've also realized, I think the reason I'm overcoming it is because I don't want that to get in the way of what I want to do for him. You know, for his sake, I don't want that to get in the way. Right. So that's it. Yeah. I would, yeah, totally get that. There's so much in what you just said there. Oh, my gosh. So 20-year journey in year 2020, like three lots of 20. Is that not an accentuation on something that's happening in your world right now? The revelation and that place of in intimacy and increase for you is just perfectly positioned for this year. It's just amazing. And I love that you have that visual that your imagination has been sanctified in the process of your relationship with him. So that now that you can see these visions and recognize here, God is saying, come on, come and be with me, come up the front. And that becomes a tool in your hand at any time when you're feeling that I, oh, that's not something that you can do. And I just wanna encourage each and every one of our challenges. That's exactly one of the tools that you can use is using your beautiful imagination to picture yourself in that place. Like we began with heaven's oasis. And if that's a place that you're gonna picture, go back to that and see yourself as he sees you. Because it's from that place that then the overflow comes from your heart and what we're receiving from him. And so we can speak that truth and love people well. And I love that you can straighten your crown, you can get your perspective right, you can push out the doubt. So I'm not going to partner with you today. Sorry. <laughs> I see you doubt, Jack. Off you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Unworthiness, yeah. all of that. Yeah. No. 
That's awesome. And one thing you mentioned earlier on was about your culture, about yeah. how the English oh. culture is one that talks a language that you talk down or you laugh at yourselves. And that's something I have noticed in recent years as well. Quite often we can use our cultural references, our cultural framework as a way to stay away from God, as an excuse to not come close to him. Um, whether we realise it or not, our cultures can very much influence our language and how we approach the throne room. So it's really cool that you see that because not a lot of people see the impact of their culture and, and how that affects their relationship with God and let alone how that affects how they speak prophetically as well. So that's really I think cool. that's once he starts to show you that you're living from heaven's kingdom, he, you know, that is your marker, not mm. not being in Great Britain or United Kingdom, being in heavenly kingdom. Yeah. That's the marker. Um, and so, you know, that none of that exists in the throne room of God. None mm. of that exists. Um, so you have to start to, and, and you're like, how do you know that? Well, it's not like, um, I, I used to have this complicated thought about, I have to, uh, once I started having supernatural encounters, thought that meant, I will be, um, I'll, I'll have arrived once I start actually having visits in heaven, yep. you know, because you hit read of these famous saints who've had these occurrences. And it was like, I had an idea of what that looked like. And so that was getting in the way of, but you're encountering heaven every day because Christ is within you. Heaven is within you. When you write these sentences and he gives you a reply and you find out it's true and it's happened, and and then he tells you about things going on in heaven you're having it it's just you're having it audibly rather than visually mm. and so once i started to get that that's actually opened the way for more visual because audio was my first sense so that's interesting too wow yeah. i love that because yes it's as you go closer as you experience more as your heart is healed how you flip those scripts even more so that god then opens up greater revelation because there's a trust in, in the relationship that's built you, he's trusting you with his heart as much as you're trusting him with your heart so there's this relational capital that's built so he's like okay come and let me show you some more mystery let me show you some of the things that you're yet to see because I, I can trust that you're in relationship with me and you're actually want to come close. It's like any of our normal relationships, hey, but as we build trust, we open up a little bit more, share a little bit more of our heart, know that we, our hearts are going to be protected and valued. The same thing happens with him, which is so cool. <laughs> Love it. Yay. All right. Now, you were telling me a little bit earlier of what God was showing you as you were talking to him about tonight's session or today's session because it's morning over where you are. Okay. <laughs> so do you want to share a little bit about what God's been showing you? Yeah, so because um, you'd said, carrie Ann, to look at the importance of sanctification when you are um, operating in the prophetic, Um and I just, I think it's just let's simplify what, what that means. The prophetic simply means to know the heart of God and to um, bring that message in any form. So that can be audibly, could be written. Um, it could even be an action. You know, Ezekiel in the Bible was an action prophet. So, and Jeremiah too, go by a field. Um, so, so there's lots of different ways in which you can become prophetic and you are um, being a messenger for God and where you are bringing what God wants to say into a situation basically um, and so the, the importance of the sanctification of it I was like wow yeah now where do I start with this I heard him say be holy for I am holy um, and I thought yeah that's in, in the scriptures but but then he said but I'm not saying be religious for I am religious and I'm like, I love you, Lord. He was saying, when we hear holy, we hear it through a religious filter because the church uses, you know, the word holy as, um, you know, the holy saints. Um, and and that, that can be describing church leaders and 
the venerables or whatever the words are. Uh, and actually what he's saying is that's not what holy is. Holy means and sanctified means be set apart, be different. When mm. the um, the angels are, is it the cherubim? What, yeah, the cherubim around the throne in heaven and they're saying in Revelation 4, 8, holy, holy, holy. And this is the worship service that goes on 24 seven in heaven. Holy, holy, holy. And they, it, they just continually say it. Um, it's the revelation of the fact that he is very different. He is set apart. He's different. He's unique. And in that set apart, he's pure and he's light. Um, so that's what holiness is. It's not trying to be good. It's becoming different, being transformed, becoming the light of God in the darkness. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's... Oh, sorry, I have a cat chasing a ball around my feet now. Sorry for the noise. Oh, Primrose. Always, every video, I, I promise you, if you watch it, always a cat. Um, yeah, the noise will become distorted when we haven't dealt with the filters in our hearts. I love what you're doing, Kerry Ann, with the whole sharks, um, just unpacking um, the very real things that we listen to, that we think we should listen to until we realize they're sharks. Like, you know, I said earlier, I, I judged because everyone judges. So I grew up in a world but I didn't know that that was judging. Mm. I thought judging was when you get extra hard. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so you don't realize the, the things that are in the way, uh, but also you don't realize the influence of voices and you just want to be following the voice of God. Mm. Uh, you know Jesus said I only um, see and do what I hear my father saying and doing um, sorry I only say and do yeah so we want to be in that place as the sons and daughters of God where we are being led of the Lord and because that's what brings freedom because it's the son who sets free if we want to see increase we want to see his kingdom come we want to be um uh, partnering with him then we need to make sure that we are getting to know him well so that we can represent him well and we're learning what the voices are so like people close to us can have a voice family friends can have a voice um, people in our work circle can have a voice the media absolutely has a voice right now and we need to learn who we listen to um, and it always begins and ends with Jesus, yeah. you know, yeah. so say you have to make a worldly decision, something in the world needs dealing with my, um, my kind of foundation always now is I'm not going to discuss it with someone in the world until I first ask Jesus about it. Yeah, because otherwise something else becomes the idol, something else has taken up the throne in my heart. And if he says to me, take their counsel, I take their counsel, right? Uh, but he might say, mm, not, not the right voice. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, so what do you say? That, that, and, and very much the days we're going into, we need this. We really do. So, um, yeah, there we go. That's, that's it, really. Um, but uh, what did I say? Exalt his holiness. Go to him first above everything. Mm -hmm. so that we can do everything with him and everything in him and everything for him wow yeah so good i love that i love that it really resonates when you say go to him first um, it's a big part of my journey as well recognizing that i would go to everybody else yeah and start yeah. emotional you know just black you do and just speaking it all out and hearing their points of view and that would just make it even bigger mess and it wasn't yeah. it just was like hey talk to me first yeah an invitation to come and process everything with him first and get his perspective was key golden key and also peace as well you find peace there then because you have something that doesn't change mm -hmm. you have a point of reference by which to move forwards which is is what we need to navigate 
our life, didn't we? Yeah. Love it. Absolutely. Yes. So good. So good. So keep going. I know you've got more. Tell us some more. Okay, I've got some more. So this is really cool. So um, I, I'm, uh, I guess you guys probably know watching uh, what words of knowledge are. I'll just unpack it a little bit just in case. So basically words of knowledge are when the Holy Spirit, they're in scripture, it's when the Holy Spirit will give you something that um, uh, is for somebody else and it usually is to unlock someone else because you couldn't know that by yourself. Only Holy Spirit could know that. It's, it's a way of the Holy Spirit saying to the person, I see you and I care about you. Um, so words of knowledge are basically um, just a way to con connect with people um, in order to speak into their lives. Now, so I've done this, um, I've been doing this for a few years now. <laughs> Every time it's like, oh Lord, no, because he usually says something that sounds completely crazy. I once had a word for someone which began with Brian the snail. <laughs> and it made sense. It turned out it was spot on so <laughs> I won't share it because it was personal but yeah it was crazy so um I just literally what I do is I um I hear him say something I write it down and then I wait and see if he gives me any impressions on that word okay. and so the first word I had I heard him say hope and charity um so I waited for a while I'm like why are we talking about hope and charity I didn't even realize at this point I was getting a word of knowledge I just thought we were gonna start talking about that uh and then I felt he said grandchildren and then I heard the word loveless I have a feeling that there is somebody who um has got some pain they have been standing in the gap possibly for grandchildren maybe can't see them uh, some kind of that kind of a thing um, and I just wanted to say to you that the Holy Spirit applauds your persistence in prayer for your granddaughters he says that is an amazing thing they are not wasted prayers he has heard them he's on them and he's going to use them and you are going to see a breakthrough and he said there is one last key which is why you're on Kerry Ann's flip the script challenge this week you're going to get that key once you've discovered that it will unlock everything. Heaven's floodgates will come forth and then he will be on your family restoration. So um, I, I'd i love to hear that that was for someone because that's a very awesome word, whoever that is. So I just want you to know he is very, very pleased with you and don't quit. You haven't missed it. Okay, I can feel him on me. That's, yeah, don't quit. Um, that's awesome. Oh, I love it. Yes, I'll be asking. I'll make sure everybody's heard this and we'll see who, who it is. That's just great. Okay, yeah. so now this is the other one. This is hilarious. <laughs> I heard him say, I'm like, Jesus, no. Bananas in pyjamas. <laughs> <laughs> I love bananas in pyjamas. That's the best. So cool. Yeah. I'm English and I what I'm like, we don't really have that here. <laughs> because it's an Aussie children's program, right? Um, and so I was almost like, am I, have I gone mad? Banana, and I could hear it, bananas in pyjamas. This is so, so annoying. I'm like, Lord. And I was like, I, I don't understand. Um, but I only know that it's an Aussie kids program because uh, some relatives of mine lived in Thailand when they were small and they used to watch it and sing it you see so I was like okay um so I'm like that is a children's program I have nothing more on bananas in pajamas and I'm like maybe somebody watching this has a child that loves bananas in pajamas maybe I don't know and then I heard um another song I have a teenage daughter and it's from the Camp Rock movie, We Won't, We Won't, We Won't Back Down. It's just the lines of a song. So I'm like, you're giving lines of songs. I thought, so the impression I had, I could be getting this wrong. Holy Spirit, just help me to be clear, um, was that there is somebody, I believe maybe a mum and a, and a teenage daughter that have been holding the line. So I'm, I'm, I'm unclear. It's either a a mum for a teenage daughter who used to love bananas in pyjamas and then loved camp rock 
or it's a mum with a teenage daughter that are holding the line for the man of the house. I feel it's probably that one. Um, uh, so I just kept hearing him say, hold the line. Uh, James 4, 7, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So that's a scripture for you. Um, hold the line, don't back down, um, but submit to God. Stay off of the battle. It's not your fight. You just keep submitting to God, putting him first in your life, making the choices that you need to make. If you need to set time aside for God and somebody else is not keen on that, you need to do it. Because although it feels like the wrong thing, it's the right thing because you are facilitating God to fight that battle for you. So submit to God, resist the devil. Don't let that fight come in your house. Resist it. Do not be a part of it. Just stay in your prayer closet with Jesus mm. and the devil will flee from you and you will see breakthrough. Wow. There we go. Awesome. You. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. So I keep going. Please keep going. Where we are, where we are keep okay. Those prophetic words, I have to say, are amazing. And I love listening to how you process that out with God and how. Mm. You know, a lot of people would get bananas and pajamas, especially from another country, and just go, yeah, okay, and put it to one side, not think any more about it. But it triggers for you, uh, there's something on that. You've written it down, you're hearing the song, and then so you're seeking Father to go, can you tell me some more? And that, that I find is just beautiful, and I just want to encourage all our challenges that what Joe has just done there each and every one of us have that opportunity wow. to have that and do that with God. Because this is the yeah. fun stuff, isn't it? It's Absolutely, yeah. You get a buzz from it. I mean, just to share, I, I haven't always done this. This is new for me. I actually watched Sean Bolt's ministry mm. um, and it, it struck such a chord with me. I was like, Jesus, I want to be able to unlock people. I want to help them. And when, when you show up like that, and Todd White too does it, when mm. you show up like that, people know it's you. There's no, like, it gets you out of the way. It's clearly Holy Spirit because you couldn't possibly know. Um, and I love that because I want to be a signpost for Jesus, not not uh, look at me, but look at Jesus, you know. So I love that that's a thing. And so I watched John Bolt and I went and did his mentoring course on it. Um, and... And then I, I had um, uh, a week away, uh, which was like a Christian camp. And I was like, I've been coming to this for years and always come like taking. I'm going to go with the attitude this year. Holy Spirit, is there something you could give me? I'm going to start trying to practice this. And it was really scary because I've never done it. But I was in this camp with like 10,000 people. And it was like, do you know what? I'm not going to see him again this week. If I do, it doesn't really matter, does it? Like, and you're in the Holy Spirit because everybody's there worshiping for a week. And so you just do it. Yeah. So he gave me these three words. And I went like looking for these people, told me what they'd be wearing so I could find them. <laughs> I found all three, gave them the words. One of them turned out to be one of the worship leaders who burst into tears. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> uh, another one was a lady who was about to... Um, give up her job and go into ministry and she was like looking for confirmation to do it uh it was just so cool so I I did this I did three words but this is the beauty of God just to say and I I you just have to go with that attitude of well if I look silly I look silly people are gracious they'll go oh thanks for trying and and Sean teaches that you know if you mess up if you think you heard it and you didn't, you just, you can still actually use it because they'll be like, um, well, why did you feel to do that? And be like, well, because, and you can share your faith even if the word was wrong. It still opens doors and people are interested. Well, that's the thing, is it? Yeah, yeah, sometimes I get it right. Sometimes I get it wrong. I'm still learning. You can still use it and, and not be afraid. And it, people are fascinated. They love it. So... But on that particular time, I did, I did it the three times and the grace of God, three times that week, because I'd gone not to receive, but to give, I had people come up to me saying, 
you are going to receive a word from a guy and you need to watch this word means something three different women that week came up to me and said i have a word for you oh no <laughs> i am so sorry the bully cat has come outside and made my cat excuse me one minute yeah. oh this is no good i'm live on zoom off you go Oh, bless the kitty cats, hey? They're just amazing to do things like that. <laughs> there we go. Um, My yes. nuts about five minutes after we finished this morning's live. So it was like, yeah, you're fine now. We're off the live. It's good. <laughs> Always live. It's a tomcat that comes and upsets the others. Right. So, um, yeah. So I got this word three times that this man was going to come and speak to me. And I'm like, this is very strange and I went the whole week thinking where are you where are you <laughs> and like three times and I'd given three words it was like the Lord giving back what I'd given finally I got to the very last night of this conference and it was the last time this conference was ever going to happen and I was like really upset because nothing had happened so I went and talked to a friend and I'm crying I'm like I don't understand that really felt like Jesus and now I feel like really disappointed she said go and talk to the guy who does the prayer ministry I've been on the prayer ministry team go and see if you've got any suggestions I said okay I went down to him and I'm crying I said I don't know what to do it just doesn't make any sense to me that three different people said that to me and it hasn't happened why hasn't it happened and he goes do you want me to ask if God's got anything for you I go okay <laughs> and he had the most beautiful word and there was um a movie that I loved and the line in there that had touched my heart when I watched it from father was I'm especially fond of you and this guy just looked at me and he said it's not much but all I'm hearing is he wants you to know I'm especially fond of you and I, oh mess <laughs> yeah and and the thing about that was actually uh what is it um the honor of a king is to search the matter out yeah. it was like I want you to start owning the fact that this matters to me and so if I have a word for you and you're not getting it get hungry search for it like don't quit you know if somebody else was supposed to have given me that word and they had a bad day and went home that yeah. doesn't mean I can't get that word to you 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 keep going till you get that word so that just that what you just said there is so powerful like for us who are now learning to flip the script it's really important to recognize that the enemy would want to take us out from releasing the words that god is giving us so that we don't release the word so for example the the gentleman that was meant to give you the word if he's had a bad day where doubt has come the shark of doubts going you don't know what you're doing you don't know what you're hearing you don't hear god's voice you're you're being silly you can't do that that's ridiculous he packs up his stuff and goes home but he you have been prepared to receive the word that he actually had and then you had to seek it out somewhere else that gentleman has succumbed to the noise of the enemy rather than flipping the script and stepping into the fullness of what god has to release the word that he has for you so when we put ourselves in those shoes, we realise then that the importance of flipping the script and recognising that language and the voices that are coming against us will actually stop us from being fully present, fully alive to what God's calling us to do and then fully available to step into moments just like that. Absolutely. And also in a way without realising it, if you look at it, it actually didn't just, he didn't just succumb to doubt, he actually increased doubt because I then had to battle with doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you hadn't received the word that you were promised. Yeah. And so we are called to actually dominate in the earth the, the demonic voices, the sharks. We are called to stop them from increasing mm -hmm. by doing the opposite. Wow, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, no, that just occurred to me when you said that. I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. I've got one more thing. Can I share it? Because I'm Please do. We've got, we've got time. Keep going. We're good. Are we? Okay, so we've got Colossians 1, verse 27. So what happened next? The last, I thought I was getting, um, I'm telling you the process for your viewers so that they can yes, learn yes. how this goes. So what happened next was I then heard hope of glory. I thought 
I was going to get another word of knowledge. So I sat there for a while and all I was getting with hope of glory was there's a verse in the Bible, isn't there, with hope of glory? Where is that? What is that? Um, and I didn't get any more. So I'm like, OK, I feel like this is something else you are saying to me now. You want me to understand something else. This is not a word of knowledge because it's not about a person. This is a scripture. We'll go and read it. So I went and looked it up. I love the way he works. Um, I, I read it first in the New King James because that's the phrase, hope of glory, that I was familiar with from the Bible I've had for years. And then when I read it there, he said, now go and read it in the Passion Translation. So I did. And this is what it says. Uh, it's so relevant for you guys on your treasure trail. Just listen. 127, I'll take my glasses off. Uh, it says, living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. So that's the hope of glory. He floods you with the ex expectation of glory. This mystery of Christ embedded within us become a heavenly treasure chest. Come on. Of hope filled with the riches of glory for his people. And God wants everyone to know it. Is that not the coolest? Oh, wow. And I realized then he's saying, I'm giving you a prophetic word for these ones who have um, committed to go on a treasure trail. I am showing them that there is a heavenly tre treasure chest and it's the hope of glory. Um, I was like, wow. So I just really want to kind of, first of all, um, applaud everyone that's taking part in the challenge that you are hungry and that you are prepared to go the distance here you know it's taken your time and you've invested in it um i just want to applaud you for that um and and have faith because god rewards the hungry it's the hungry ones that he's after so you won't go disappointed i know that much for sure um, you're in very safe hands. I also know that. So you've got fire on the whole situation. But um, as individuals, if you are starting to hear voices that, that might come in and say, yeah, but, you know, it's all very well for Kerry Ann. I, I can just assure you, no, you you are a hungry one. And so you will be rewarded, just like that story I said at the conference. Um, but he wants to flood you with the expectation of glory okay now this is always amazing what does that mean that means uh the full presence of god the weighty presence of god filling you up to such a degree but you can't help but exude it from your being you know light coming out of you kind of thing fire in your hands um you cannot help but pour that out onto others. And this all comes as you unlock these keys, you get inside that treasure chest. I'm gonna give away your thing. You haven't got that far yet, have you? And that will be, right? So the hope of glory. But what I wanted to say to you is, it's not just that that is an awesome thing, but it's an awesome time. I'm very much into um, the Lord shows me the times and the seasons. We are in a time, as everyone knows, that is crazy, okay? So, yeah, we can talk about darkness. Sure, we can. We can also talk about light. The light extinguishes the darkness. The darkness doesn't comprehend it, but the light just is there, and the darkness can't stay when the light is there, okay? Now, this matters so much to God on his calendar. Now, think about this a minute. The creator of the universe, it says in the Bible that he set the sun and the moon and the stars as signs in the heavens. OK, so he uses them like a clock. So there they are going round and round, doing their thing. And every now and again, they they do certain things that are as signs and that speak uh, It's in scripture. We've had, you know, the, the the sun stood still when Joshua was in battle. Mm -hmm. um, there's different things occur that speak. We know that uh, in Bethlehem, there was a sign in the star of Bethlehem, right? So the Magi knew uh, a king is being born. There's going to be a light breaking out here. 
we are going to follow that light, we are going to worship that king, right? Now that sign, many scholars believe, was Jupiter and Saturn aligning with a third star um, called Regulus, which means king. And those three stars all coming like aligning on that particular night suddenly went push with brightness because the sun on all three of them made one, basically. Three in one, funny that. <laughs> this time, so Jupiter and Saturn, that happens every now and again, apparently every 400 years. So the Lord has led me on a journey in the last couple of months to look into this more. Uh, through a season of um, different things, he gives me little treasures, he gives me numbers, he gives me all sorts of things, and I have to go dig and ask him what it means. Um, but I went through this whole process and um, he took me to the fact that this is taking place again on the 21st of December this year, which uh, here in the Northern Hemisphere is the darkest night of the year. For you, it's the other way around. You're going to tip into your summer. Whichever way it is, it's the crossover between light and dark, right? So that, that transitional moment in this year of all years, hello, yeah. that same sign, Jupiter and Saturn, is going to align and create a bright star again. Um, whether we'll see it, you know, who knows, but it's there. Um, and it is, I just think of, um, you know, John when it says um, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not comprehended it. And also, um, is it Isaiah 60? Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, but the Lord will, will rise upon you and be gracious to you. Um, I just, I, yeah, in fact, can I read that? I'm, I'm paraphrasing it and I didn't want to miss it. Isaiah 60. I'm sure it's amazing in the Passion, but I don't have that book in my hand yet I can look it up online but I didn't I have it down on the floor if you want me to grab it <laughs> uh, let's go here uh, so this is the new King James yeah arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Wow. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. The whole, the whole chapter is great, but I'll stop there. And, and that I think is uh, really what I want to prophesy over you watching this. Uh, you have been brought for such a time as this. You are engaging with Kerry Ann in this um, heart healing, uh, liberating process for such a time as this, because right now, even this month, the Lord is setting a sign that says, I'm going to rise and shine upon you so that the light, my light in you is going to go out and reach those people groups that are on your heart. So I feel like he's saying you get, get, Get real calm and quiet and peaceful in your secret place with me. Listen in to who I say you are. Keep listening. Let me tell you who I say you are. And also listen in to who I have put you on the earth for. Because you each got a unique value uh, and treasure and calling and destiny. And there are people that he has put in your life. And it might begin with those closest to you. It might be um, um, a marginalized people group. It might be a nation. But the Lord has got plans for your life and they're good plans. So be encouraged. You are here for such a time as this to shine the light of God. Amen. Amen. I receive that. We receive that. That's a really great, amazing, powerful word. And I absolutely love that the planets will come together to make another star. So similar to what? Yeah, wow. Just really, this is just an incredible year. Um, I know that a lot of people have gone through hard stuff 
through 2020, but they, I have to say I have seen more breakthrough, more breakthrough than ever in this year and more positioning and more opening up of voices, more unlocking of hearts than I have ever seen in my 45 years here on the planet. And there's something significant, just beautifully significant to see that that is going to happen just before Christmas. Gorgeous. So, uh, yeah. Um, it, it made me feel as well, just personally, made me feel like I want to enjoy Christmas more than ever this year. <laughs> um, financially, that's not, not such a doable thing. But it's not about finance. It's not about that. It's about the light of the world has come. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and so on, my prayer has been, help me love people well this Christmas, Lord. Help me to shine. Help me to just be full of the joy of who you are and what you're doing in the earth. And you know, help me to see it, like to grasp. Yes, it's getting darker. And wow, you're shining brighter. Yeah. Actually, as you shine brighter, that darkness will disappear. It's only for a season. It's, it can't continue to increase because it's, it's like a tipping point. Yeah. You can't have light and darkness both happening. So it got darker and now the light's going to go like that. That's worth celebrating, hey? Like, seriously, this treasure hunting stuff's pretty good. <laughs> and, I, and I love that on a treasure hunt, that you're having with God it's not just heart stuff as well it's him actually revealing treasure to you from his kingdom to you because you are seeking him and you know going on the hunt with him when he takes you to places to discover new things which is beautiful and uh, I'm learning that he speaks in so many ways and actually he's really fun it's a fun journey I don't know about you do you do you do you, do you like number plates and dates and all yeah. that yeah it sounds like oh you just come on you just like trying to make something out that isn't there and it's like I get that because that's where I was but when it happens so frequently and regularly and it's in your face mm -hmm. and you follow the trail and you ask him about it like I kept having 12 12 and 21 12 which is how I arrived at googling and discovering this whole thing about the planets um, so I went and looked up the Greek and the Hebrew um, uh, numbers, 1212, 12, in the Strong's Concordance, what the Hebrew and the Greek meant. I know I can't remember. I've got it written down. But but the point was, um, it was, yeah, you know what? That's okay. You can go dig. You go dig. Go dig what 1212 12 is in the Greek and the Hebrew. You can Google it. Um, and it just tells you more about what he's doing right now. And um, and it is like having a treasure trail, you know, it's but for real, it's like Indiana Jones, but in real life, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> it is, that's it. And that's what makes it such a beautiful adventure. And I love that. And it's for those that actually want to turn aside from everything else and put their trust and their focus on the Lord, that he takes you on those treasure hunts. Because he's just like, let me show you something. It's like he's a little kid in some ways so much like, come on, I've got something to show you. Come with me. Come on, come on. <laughs> and he yeah. loves to reveal those treasures to us and just open up his treasure chest. And so this is just awesome. I love it. Love it. Wow. Wow. I can't believe it's an hour already and we've had such a fun time chatting. It's been really, really awesome. I just want to, um, yeah, just endorse what you're doing, Kerri Ann. I just think um, I've, I have watched you grow, even in the short time I've known you. Uh, I think, um, yeah, it's just a really exciting time in your world right now. Um, and I know that he's got good plans for you. Um, uh, and I, I, I feel like it's just an honor to be a part of what you've been doing here um and i'm excited for everybody that's jumped on board with you um so i just want to bless you ladies that are watching um i thank you for inviting me it's been an amazing time thank you yay and we thank you joe and we bless you too we thank you for taking the time to jump on in here spend a little time seeing what's going on but also to seek father for each and every one of us you know the fact that you've had 
two powerful words there, words of knowledge that will go out into our group. And then you have a word for all of us as well. I just really value and appreciate your time that you would set aside that time to seek the Lord and actually hear and receive from him for us. And to come across a scripture that actually has a treasure chest in is just so good. <laughs> That's so good. Do the treasure chest. Chest. Yeah. He's amazing. It's my it's my privilege. It really is. Oh, it's just so beautiful. So we bless you and we thank you, Lord, for precious Joe and that she has been a part of everything that we're doing. And Lord, I pray and call in a blessing to come to her and her beautiful family this Christmas. That her Christmas will be bigger than, greater than, more joyous than she's ever had before. Lord, the blessings will come and they will not only be there for her, but they will overtake her. And Lord, that there will be more than enough, not only for her, but for her friends and those that she she spends time with over this Christmas season. And we thank you, Lord, that she is a treasure hunter and that she's had time in your presence to bring to us the words that are on your heart. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yay. Yay! Well, my beautiful challenges, thank you for joining us. When you have a chance to watch, please put some comments down in the box. Show Joe some love. Let us know who those prophetic words were for. We really want to know the words of knowledge. Let we let us know um, how that hits and who that was for, because we would love to see how that all came together that'll be just amazing to find out about and uh, excited that we head into day five in not too long tomorrow morning for us in australia here it'll be today in the evening for everybody else i think i said that right anyway doesn't it? soon to go day five where we'll talk about the treasure we found x that marks the spot and so that'll be just the best way to finish up our five days of flipping the script yay so wonderful people, I will see you tomorrow, bright and early, <laughs> and um, enjoy whatever you're up to as you watch this. We bless your time and thank you that you've spent time with us. All right, love you guys. See you again soon. We'll do that. <laughs>